Fireman Sam and the Oxygen Chamber. It was the end of the summer school holidays. Mandy and her family had been to Cyprus, and Sarah and James had been caravanning in Scotland. Norman had spent the whole six weeks at home whilst Trevor, the bus driver, had moved in with his mother, Dillis, and repaired the electrical faults diagnosed by Fireman Sam in a previous video. Despite appearances, it hadn't been snowing. Unsurprisingly, Norman Price was seriously bored. Ponty Pandy had never really given him the thrills and spills he craved, despite his close association to and frequent dalliances with the local fire service. Even whitewater rafting was no longer of interest to him. With Mandy, Sarah and James returned from their respective vacations, Norman wanted to have fun before the judgery of school could rear its autumnal head. He had collected together a crazy assortment of gadgets, an oxygen chamber, a jar of madras sauce and a wood carving of a daegu, a small cavio morth rodent endemic to central Chile. Let's have fun, he said tautologously. And so it was that the children played. They took turns doing their Michael Jackson impressions in the oxygen chamber. They did each other to ingest a teaspoon of madras sauce in an immature and irresponsible game they called the Madras Sauce Challenge, and they took turns photographing each other in a variety of ridiculous poses with the daegu. Fireman Sam was enjoying his day off, driving his fire engine around the park, hanging out with Elvis, still wearing his uniform since he had no other clothes, being a computer-generated x scene animated figurine, when he spotted the four children indulging in their hilarious, to them, activities, blissfully unaware, as they were, of the potential fatal consequences of their actions as Fireman Sam would soon draw to their young attentions. "'Hello, children, what are you doing?' he called inquisitively. Norman gave a breakdown pretty similar to the one a couple of frames back. Fireman Sam was unimpressed, possessed as he was, with a capacity for seeing the bigger picture. "'Does none of you realise the dangerous combination of objects you have hereby assembled?' he asked rhetorically, because they obviously hadn't. "'We have here one, a source of oxygen, two, a source of heat, and three, a flammable item.' Any two on their own would be fine, but all three at once could be deadly. The children begged forgiveness, but Fireman Sam would only grant it on the grounds that he could tell them all about the rectangular distribution, also known as the continuous uniform distribution, on the basis that he had been waiting for an opportunity to do so since the episode of the Orchard Fire back in the spring, and no such opportunity had ever arisen. It's like this, you see, he commenced. If an event happens randomly and can take any value between, say, A and B with equal likelihood, and when you sketch the PDF, it has this rather dull, rectangular shape. Much like my summer holidays, said Norman pitifully. There are two special formulae for the rectangular distribution, he continued, which are EX equals half of A plus B, and VARX equals one twelfth of B minus A squared. Then he turned to leave. Was that it? asked Norman. Afraid so, replied Fireman Sam. And both he and his legendary statistical explanations were gone, save for one last group photograph. <laughs>